being burned and innocent civilians attacked on the streets. Azerbaijan and Turkey's agenda? To wipe out all Armenians. By now, the Azerbaijani regime has violated three humanitarian ceasefires. This only reaffirms that the state of Azerbaijan is the aggressor, while our armed forces are fighting to survive through Azerbaijan's constant war crime efforts. Armenians are fighting for the right to exist, yet the international community has been silent. But we will not be silenced. Our youth is fasting as a peaceful demonstration condemning the aggressive attacks by Azerbaijan and Turkey on Artsakh civilians, churches, and schools, and standing in solidarity with our brothers and sisters defending our homeland. The Armenian Youth Federation, Western United States, is here today holding a week-long hunger strike in front of the federal building with three demands for the U.S. government recognize Artsakh, sanction Turkey, and sanction Azerbaijan. Now, inviting Tiro Magardichyan, a hunger striker, to share about day two of their hunger strike. Within the past month, 1,009 soldiers have been martyred in the defense of our homeland. Azerbaijan continues to shell Stepanagerd and other civilian settlements in Artsakh. In the absence of military targets in these villages, Azerbaijan's actions are blatant violations of international humanitarian law. As Azerbaijan commits heinous war crimes daily, the United States government remains silent and turns a blind eye to these gross human rights violations. A country that was founded on benevolent principles of life and liberty cannot stand idly by while Christian Armenians are being massacred in their own homeland. As American citizens, we demand that our government uphold true American values. The Armenian Youth Federation demands that the US government recognize Arta in order to ensure peace and stability for the indigenous Armenian population without the constant threat of ethnic cleansing. Furthermore, we demand that the U.S. halt all forms of economic and military aid to Azerbaijan and Turkey. As co-chairs of the OSCE Minsk Group, the U.S. has an obligation to effectively mediate a solution. This cannot happen until the U.S. holds Azerbaijan accountable for its violence and aggression. This afternoon, we delivered our demands to the U.S. government inside this building. We also made apparent to our community that supporting the economies of Turkey and Azerbaijan while the two countries are trying to finish off the Armenian genocide will not be tolerated. To achieve this goal, we urge our compatriots to boycott all Turkish products within and outside of our community. We encourage all business owners to cease selling Turkish products. We ask all of you to join this boycott campaign. Purchasing Turkish products means aiding the enemy's efforts in this war. Let's collectively hold each other accountable and eradicate all Turkish products from our communities. Currently, we have entered the 24th hour of our hunger strike in front of this building. As our soldiers put their lives on the line every day, fighting for our very own existence, as young children and elderly are displaced from their homes, living in bomb shelters, as the world continues to turn a blind eye to the horrific reality of Armenians in Artsakh, this hunger strike is the least we can do in order to achieve a fruitful response from the United States government. Today, Secretary of State Pompeo held phone calls with Prime Minister Pashinyan and President Aliyev, and again failed to condemn Azerbaijan for its violation of the U.S. brokered ceasefire.
brokering futile ceasefire agreements between Armenia and Azerbaijan is not enough. The U.S. government must unequivocally condemn Azerbaijan for its continuous violence. Three ceasefire agreements have been brokered by the misgroup co-chairs to date. Unsurprisingly, however, Azerbaijan has violated each within minutes. Evidently, it is not possible to make diplomatic arrangements and progress with a genocidal government who only has one thing in mind, to eradicate all Armenians. It is time for the United States to hold Azerbaijan and Turkey accountable for their aggression against Armenians. It is imperative for our community to be present here every night to demand that the U.S. government take effective action. The U.S. holds an important role, and we must ensure that our government acts correctly in our time of need. It is in our unity where we find strength, which ultimately brings about change in our communities and across the world. Turkey? Yes. Do we want to sanction Azerbaijan? Yes. But at the foremost, we want to protect those 150,000 brave citizens of Artsakh. And I heard the other day that 50,000 women and children have been evacuated from their homes. How terrible is that? That people had to be driven from their homes while others are being killed by drones and mercenaries. This is an abominable embarrassment for the international community and I'm just here to support the hunger strikers to say that California stands with Artsakh, recognizes Artsakh and I was just saying to somebody before, the last time I was in Shushi, I was at that beautiful white cathedral at a wedding and to think that that cathedral was bombed again by the Azeri drones, it's just plain wrong. So again, I'm proud to stand with Artsakh. I'm proud to support this effort tonight to bring recognition to this fight because what happens here resonates across the country and what affects one of us affects all of us. And so we're in this together. God bless and thank you. And I'll do a little bit of Armenia. Tebi Haktana. We're going to win this. Right? Thank you very much. Thank you, 
and thank you to the AYF for organizing this hunger strike as we enter the fourth consecutive week of countless international ceasefires and bombings of civilians and non-military infrastructure in Artsakh and Armenia by Azerbaijan with the explicit military support of Turkey. Let's encourage everyone we know to support these activists and visit every night after 8 p.m. to give them our encouragement. Also, make sure to join the community here on Sunday as we march to the Azadi Consulate down the street and continue to make our voices heard. Today, with Turkey and Azerbaijan joining forces to invade the Armenian homeland and continue the Armenian genocide, the Armenian people demand worldwide boycotts, divestments, and sanctions against the republics of Turkey and Azerbaijan in order to bring lasting justice and peace for Artsakh and Armenians. Boycotts and divestments and sanctions are all powerful tools of economic activism to hold the criminal regimes of Turkey and Azerbaijan accountable, economically and politically, for their attacks on Artsakh. For half a decade now, the AYF has been calling on the world to use these forms of economic activism, along with the traditional forms of direct action protests, to add more strength to our demands for justice. Now, the use of these tactics are reaching a new level of popularity within our community and opening new doors of opportunity for the Armenian cause. I want to share briefly how we reached this moment. In 2014, with the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide approaching, the AYF recognized that Turkey's denial of genocide justice is a present-day issue with immediate urgency and launched the Divest Turkey Initiative in order to use economic pressure to hold Turkey accountable for its ongoing human rights violations. AYF members, working with Armenian Students Associations on local college campuses across California, discovered public records showing over $74 million invested in Turkey through the University of California System's retirement and pension funds. Throughout 2015, AYF worked with our student government representatives, built broad-based coalitions with other student groups, wrote op-eds in our campus newspapers, campaigned, protested, and worked to pass student resolutions across the UC system demanding that the UC regents divest these funds. Within a matter of months, all nine UC schools, including Berkeley, Davis, Irvine, Los Angeles, Merced, Riverside, San Diego, Santa Barbara, and Santa Cruz went on to unanimously vote to divest from Turkey, representing the will of a combined 238,000 students across the University of California, one of the largest university systems in the world. Unfortunately, today, the University of California continues its investments in Turkey, hiding their decision-making behind the global private equity firm Blackstone. Inspired by these actions, Assemblymember Audrey Nazarian found hundreds of millions of additional California taxpayer dollars invested in the Republic of Turkey through the California Public Retirement System, or CalPERS, and Cal California State Teachers Retirement System, or CalSTRS. He drafted legislation modeled on the student resolutions passed on UC campuses, and our community mobilized again to call on CalPERS and CalSTRS to divest these funds from Turkey. In October of 2019, after many legislative battles, Assembly Bill 1320, titled the Divestment from Turkish Bonds Act, was signed into law by Governor Gavin Newsom. The law will force the boards of CalPERS and CalSTRS to divest their investments in Turkey if and only if the United States passes federal sanctions on Turkey. To be honest, the only reason the law does not immediately force divestment is because the board members of CalPERS and CalSTRS refuse to do so unless they are forced to by the federal government. They want the right to invest in our taxpayer dollars in whatever countries they want, even if they're committing war crimes, so long as it brings them a few pennies of profit. Tonight, here is a word of advice to the UC Regents, to Blackstone CEO Alan Schwartzman, to CalPERS CEO Marcy Frost, and CalSTRS CEO Jack Ennis. The hard-earned dollars of California teachers, retirees, university students, and taxpayers should not be funding war crimes. Don't wait for someone to force you. Do the right thing and divest from Turkey immediately. Today, the E3 
ethos of economic activism has spread further with Azerbaijan's repeated ceasefire violations and attacks on the civilians of Artsakh and Armenia, supported directly by Turkey. Here we are recording new victories every day. In recent weeks, we have seen Armenian consumers and businesses make the decision to boycott Turkish and Azeri products. Further, huge lobbyist and public relations companies have been exposed as registered foreign agents for Azerbaijan and Turkey. DLA Piper, Livingston Group, and most recently, Mercury Public Affairs have all canceled and distanced themselves from the lucrative contracts they were signing. BGR Group and countless others are next. Every PR firm or lobbyist who runs from an Azeri or Turkish contract with their tails between their legs, every divestment resolution passed, every dollar boycotted is a victory that should inspire similar actions around the world that can eventually snowball into an avalanche for Turkey and Azerbaijan's weak economies, pressuring them to end their pursuit of war with Armenia. Everyone around the world seeking to help the Armenian people in their pursuit of justice should look to see if their local, state, or federal governments have investments in Turkey or Azerbaijan. Look into whether the businesses you support consult with firms that peddle anti-Armenian propaganda to your representatives and newspapers. Keep investigating, keep identifying investments, and finding new targets for us to pressure. This is the kind of tenacious, grassroots activism that will always prevail over dictatorships, over oil-drenched lobbyists, and over anyone who dares attack the Armenian people. May our brothers and sisters in Artsakh bravely defending our borders and bringing down hundreds of millions of dollars of military equipment from Turkey and Azerbaijan inspire and light a fire in every single one of us pursuing justice and remind us of the power our people have within us at all times. And may these hunger strikers and community members standing here in front of the federal building this week remind you that wherever you are in the world, you have the power and the unique opportunity to do something for your people. There has never been a more vital time to use that power to push for all pressure on these criminal regimes. Sanction Turkey, sanction Azerbaijan, and recognize Artsakh. Thank you. Good evening to our dedicated Armenian youth and to all that are here standing for justice and peace for our compatriots in Artsakh and Armenia who are making the ultimate sacrifices to defend our homeland. Our community has been vocal and active since Azerbaijan and Turkey launched their unprovoked attack on the civilians of Artsakh on September 27th. Our community is especially proud of the Armenian Youth Federation who has been crucial in getting our voices heard in the United States and around the world, urging the international community at large to recognize Artsakh's right to self-determination and condemn the aggression and war crimes being committed daily by the regimes of Turkey and Azerbaijan. The citizens of Artsakh have been subjected to massacres, pogroms, and war crimes by Azerbaijan and Turkey who would like nothing more than to cleanse the region of Armenians. They have made it clear their intentions for a pan-Turkic region and empire. Enough is enough. The world cannot allow such regimes to act with impunity. We demand that the United States and all nations independently recognize Artsakh, where Artsakh's territorial integrity cannot be questioned, where any attack on its borders will be considered an international red flag. Recognition of Artsakh, as well as holding Turkey and Azerbaijan accountable, will prevent the further loss of civilian lives and prevent another atrocity in the 21st century. 
Recognition also stands in accordance with UN and international principles and is consistent with the region's history, population, and self-governance. Artsakh has been self-governed by its Armenian population for centuries, deserving and is deserving of international recognition of its self-determination. To finally live in peace without the risk of genocidal regimes seeking to exterminate their very existence. One of the principles of the UN Charter is the right of self-determination of peoples, of which Artsakh is a textbook example of. In 2005, the United Nations also unanimously adopted the Responsibility to Protect Principle, which was done to ensure that the past failures of the UN member states to prevent the genocides in Rwanda and Srebrenica would never be repeated again. The principle declared member states' preparedness to take timely and decisive action when national authorities fail to protect their populations. The situation in Artsakh since September 27th serves as a prime example of where this UN principle needs to be enforced. Azerbaijan, who claims Artsakh as a part of its borders and nation, has been indiscriminately bombing civilian settlements with rockets and cluster munitions. They have done so daily without any attempts to mitigate civilian death or destruction to civilian infrastructure. It is time to sanction Azerbaijan and sanction Turkey for their repeated war crimes. They have made public to the world that they will not stop until they reclaim Artsakh through force and cleanse the region of its civilian population. We demand that the U.S. not only sanction Azerbaijan and Turkey, but enforce Section 907 of the United States uh, Freedom Support Act banning aid to the government of Azerbaijan. We also call on the United States to ban weapon sales to these regimes, as well as military aid. Such regimes should not be tacitly uh, encouraged and cannot be trusted with the sale of arms. We demand that the United States investigate the war crimes that they are committing daily against peaceful civilians and send much needed humanitarian aid to Artsakh, which is currently being blocked over Turkey, Azerbaijan, and Georgian airspace. And we demand the implementation of the Royce Engel peace proposal and the call for an immediate cessation of hostilities. Everyone in the diaspora needs to follow the lead of our youth and keep the pressure on our wor world leaders to hold Turkey and Azerbaijan accountable. Like the Armenian Genocide, we will not forget what is happening now to our people. And we will not rest until justice and peace is delivered. Thank you.